Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The universe goes on and on, as round and round she goes. And where she starts and where she ends is something no one knows. Beginnings and endings. Our neat and precise human minds will insist on clearly stated limits, boundaries, definitions. But unfortunately, there are no satisfactory ways to limit, bound, or define the truly important things in life. Have you interrogated the prisoner? I have. Hey, who says I'm a prisoner? We have no use for the cargo. Destroy it and confiscate the ship. What are you trying to pull? And dispose of the prisoner. What do you mean, dispose of the prisoner? Am I being sentenced to something? To death. Don't I get a trial? You have been tried and found guilty. <laughs> mystery drama, The Hole in the Sky, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mandel Kramer. Get rid of that noise, Curly. What's the matter? Don't you like good music? <laughs> I thought you was a real space jockey. If you want to talk about space, all right. You want to get down to business? Well, how about a little drink first? When I listen to a deal from you... I better be stone-cold sober. Oh, would all Curly ever steer you wrong, Raj? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, do you know where Medusa's at? Medusa? Uh, that should be a star beyond Polaris. Well, I got the chart right here. Uh, the fifth planet circling around Medusa is called Bacchus. Here you can see it. Mm -hmm. I can also see it's a pretty good trip. Uh, can that lock of yours hold a 3,000-pound cargo? What kind of cargo? Why do you care? I won't handle contraband. <laughs> What's contraband? Everything's contraband to somebody somewhere. You know what I'm talking about, Curly. Hey, what's the difference, huh? The trip's illegal anyhow. There are no solo flights allowed outside the solar system, so what do you care? No drugs, no weapons, Curly. Now, would I be mixed up with weapons and drugs? Up to your ears. Uh, no, no, no. This is just stuff for the ladies. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Bacchus is a wild, wild place. It's just being colonized. Now, you could clear a fortune with some makeup. You know, powder, makeup, things the ladies just have to have. That's contraband. Sure, sure. Hey, but it's nice, harmless contraband. Look, if I'm caught with any sort of non-essential... If you're caught, what's the difference what you're caught with? What's the deal? <laughs> hey, fantastic. You split the take 50-50. I what? That's right, old buddy. Right down the middle. What's the catch? No catch, no catch. No ifs, ands, and maybes. 50-50. Some deal, huh? When do I leave? Your cargo's ready right now. Tonight? Well, it better be tonight. You're due to sit down and back us no later than the 21st. 21st of what? 21st of this month. 21st? That, that, that's in six days. Well, actually, six and a half. Look at the chart. You see where Bacchus is? Sure. Well, this trip should take six weeks. There's no way I could ever cover this distance in six days. Oh, sure there is. How? Why, Roger, old buddy, you know how. You just go through the hole. Oh. I see. That's the catch. Ah, oh, now don't tell me you're scared of the hole. I'm scared out of my wits. Now look, if anybody had ever told me that Rod Thorpe had that little streak of yellow... Don't I... try to get a rise out of me, Curly. I'm not yellow. I'm smart. I'll see you around. I make it around 8 o'clock. That's as long as they can hold the job open. Goodbye, Curly. Hey, don't don't go away, man. It'll make it harder for you to come back here. I'm not coming back. And I meant it. I was through with all that stuff. But what else was there for me to do? What else did I know how to do? I could join the Space Navy and wear a uniform... And be assigned to contraband control, which meant I'd have to prowl through space hunting down guys like me or guys like I used to be. Magda was waiting for me when I got home. Curly called. Yeah? He said your ship is loaded and ready. Mm-hmm. That's what he told you, huh? 
Well, he's in for the surprise of his life because I'm not going. What did you say? I said I'm not going. Honey, that's just great. Is it? Well, it means you got something better. Oh, is that what you think? You do have something better, don't you? I don't have anything at all. Well, then I don't understand. How could you turn Curly down? Because I... Because I... Ed, how do you think I've lived this long? Being scared is what keeps you being careful. Okay. It's just I understood there was a fortune in this trip. But I'd have to go through the hole. And I'm never going to do that again. Roger, you've come through it before. Do you have any idea what it is? That hole in the sky? I don't know. Some people say it's all in the spaceman's imagination. Let somebody tell me that. You don't know what it's like. Okay, Rog, okay. It's a hole. A big black hole in the sky. I believe you, Rog. And there is nothing in there. Nothing. Honey, don't you think you need a drink? Nothing. Do you understand? It's a kind of corridor. A crazy kind of corridor. Whatever you say. It's like the back door to everywhere. Wherever you want to go, it's right there. You sound like fun. Like, like everything opens up on it. Everything is right there. Once you're there, you're everywhere. I believe you. Stars that are billions and billions of light years away from each other. Like, like, like Polaris and Orion. Like Taurus and Ursa Major. It's as if you can just move from one to the other, like crossing the street. That's why it's only six days from here, because six days is how long it takes to get to the hole in the sky. And once you get to the hole, you're anywhere you want to be. Do you understand? I keep telling you, it's not all that complicated. But I'm not going there again. Oh, honey, just try a little goblet of this and you'll go anywhere. It's a wild place. Hey... Maybe I'd like to go there. A place where the whole universe is twisted and turned on itself. Sometimes it's quiet. Silent as the grave. And then... Then it explodes. Explode? Everything goes haywire. Crazy. There's no longer any sense of time. Or space. Or place. And you can just... Disappear. How can you just... Disappear. Take just a little sip of this. It's good for what ails you. Look. Right here on Earth, okay? There used to be a big ocean between Buenos Aires and Cape Town. Thousands of miles of ocean. Sure. And right in the middle, someplace, there used to be a spot called the Bermuda Triangle. Is that so? And the ships that they had, the ones that were supported by... Out. The ships that sailed over that spot disappeared. Ships that flew above this place disappeared. So? So this kind of thing has happened before. Maybe that was a hole in the ocean. Sure, Raj. If you say so. Look, get that tone out of your voice. I can't go through that hole in the sky again. I can't. I, I made a dozen trips. And nothing happened. How long can I be lucky? No, if I go this time, I, I'll be lost. I'll disappear. Oh, come on, honey. Take a drink. You'll feel better. You always do. I've been thinking about it. I'm going to sell the lark. And do what? I can sell the lark to the Navy and raise a stake. And go where? Where? Oh, to a planet like Bacchus. Or maybe right here in our own solar system. A wild place like Venus or a mine. And you could raise enough from the sale of the lark? Oh, a good piece of it. For the rest, uh, well, I gave you plenty of jewels, money, credits. I know you did. All I'm asking is for you to give me some of it so I can get started. That's not all you're asking, Raj. You're also asking me to go with you and break my back in a mine or on a ranch. It's only tough for the first couple of years. I don't want to go. And as far as the money's concerned, it's mine. You gave it to me. I thought you and I were beyond words like yours and mine. And just said ours. Yeah. What'll I do the day you get tired of me? I'll never get tired of you, Magda. I'm sorry, Roger. I can't say to you, my darling, everything I own in the world is yours. Take it. Magda, I'm not asking for anything which I... You know that basically I'm out for myself. Did you think you could change me? All right, Magda. 
Six days there and six days back. Well, honey, that's less than two weeks. I'll be waiting for you when you come home. Back from her anyhow. She could only give me what she had to give. Why did I think I was entitled to more? And who was I kidding? I'd become a farmer, a rancher, a miner. I was nothing but a space rat. And I might as well learn to live with it. And die with it. I didn't even bother to tell Curly what he already knew. I went directly to the spaceport. The space car. But we had to go through the ritual. Hey, Roger. Hi, Joe. Hey, you inspected and cleared. Okay. That's due page two. Uh, destination? Uh, Venus. And cargo? None. Purpose of journey? To visit friends. Oh, come on, Roger. You gotta do better than that. Why? What's the matter? Give me a break. The sheet does get checked. How does that look? To visit friends? Well, what do you want me to say? You could say, uh, medical emergency. Say medical emergency. Mm, you gotta prove you're sick, though. You gotta name the doctor and so forth and so on. Joe, write down anything you please. Well, don't bite my head off. You and I know what you're doing. You and I know where you're going, okay? All right, look, I'm going to visit my poor old mother. Great. But you better have one, and she better be on Venus. Joe, just let me get out of here, will you? Raj, don't go. What do you mean, don't go? I mean, pack it in. Walk away from it. Are you telling me I can't go? No, I'm not telling you not to go. I'm just asking you not to. Why? Because you won't be coming back. How do you know? I know all the signs. You're not coming back, Raj. I know you are not coming back. At this point, he probably knows something we don't. But what? From the little we know about it, we can appreciate that any journey... ...and uncertain. But obviously, there's something especially dangerous and ominously unusual about this one. Well, Act Two is but a few minutes away. What was that popular song from a generation ago? It was called Far Away Places with Strange. And what were those far away places? Oh, they were in Asia, Africa, Europe. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away. But our story today is about really faraway places with strange names like Tau Seti, Betelgeuse. And on a clear night, sometimes you may see them up there in the sky. What kind of thing is that to say to me? I'm not coming back. Because it's true. Raj, five years ago, I had my own ship, too. Five years ago, Curly had a job for me. Something like this, only uh, mine was in Orion someplace. Look, why don't we swap stories when I come back? You are not coming back, Rod. You better listen. I came out to the field here feeling just like you do. Everything inside me like jelly and... And like you, I knew I wasn't coming home again. I'd been through that hole in the sky too many times. Like you, I was scared. <laughs> scared to face guys like Curly... Also scared of starving. What was I going to do to make a living? What else can I do to make a living? Join up, Rob. Oh, no, no, I could never do that. That's what I thought at first. But isn't it better all around if guys like you and me wear the uniform? At least we understand. I have to go now. It isn't too bad. The money's good. It's clean. Bribery, that's clean. Uh, maybe not, but... Hey, you can protect your friends. I'm only on the take as far as cargo and destinations concerned. All the money in the world wouldn't get you off the ground if I knew your ship wasn't spaceworthy. Yeah. Well, look, I got a schedule to keep. Don't go, Rod. I have to. Well, then, don't go through the hole. You know as well as I do I have no choice. <sighs> okay. Okay, I'm on the desk tonight. Uh, maybe I can keep the hounds off your trail. In 15 minutes, I was completely clear of the Earth. I would have no problem while in the boundaries of our own solar system. 
But as soon as I was out in the galaxy, the patrols would be after me. I could outdistance any single pursuit ship. But if they had my position and course, they could set up a fire network that could destroy me in the fraction of a second. I could hear Joe Dresden on the monitor. He was getting reports from all of his scouts who had sighted or thought they had sighted me. He would be feeding all this data into a computer, which would calculate my exact position. Attention all ships, Rainbow Command. Illegal craft identified as Lark, registered Captain Roger Thorpe, probably headed for Polaris. Consult charts 946 and 202. Subtract coordinates 4 and 8 from coordinates 12 and 18. Lock, challenge. Allow five minutes for reply, then open fire. Thank you, Joe. He had sent the pursuit off in exactly the opposite direction. He had bought me at least two days' time. Attention, all ships, Rainbow Command. Fugitive reported headed for Ursa Major. Consult charts 380426. Fugitive reported headed for Tau Ceti. How skillfully he kept directing the pursuit away from me. I was coming to the end of the fifth day. And now I didn't have to worry. I was near the hole in the sky. And even though so many people were convinced that it was all fiction, that was back down there in the safety and security of Earth. Up here, even the most skeptical suddenly became believers. I could rest assured there was nobody within a trillion miles of me now. Roger. Roger. You can answer me, Roger. You won't give away your position. I'm on a sealed frequency. Joe? You're at the edge of the hole, Roger. I know. Turn back. I can't. I'll, I'll clear a path for you. I have to keep going. I'll bring you home safe and sound. I'm going in now, Joe. I'm here. And I was there. I was in the hole in the sky. It was so quiet. So peaceful. So tranquil. I'd better feed my computer. My speed, my course, my declaration. I could expect to find myself orbiting Medusa. Then I could set my bearing for the planet Bacchus. I could still hear Joe's voice. Roger, it isn't too late. Now get out of there. It's quiet, Joe. It's quiet. That doesn't mean anything. You know as well as I do, it can all change in a fraction of a second. Thanks for everything, Joe. I'm all right now. Come home, Roger. Come home before it's too late. Roger, come home before it's too late. Joe. Joe, where are you? Where are you? Suddenly, everything started to spin. Everything went out of control. Not just my computer and my instruments, but everything inside of me. It was as if, as if I was just coming apart under some terrible pressure. An unbelievable stress and strain that began to pull me in every direction. It was as if it were the end of the world. Or maybe it was the beginning. Maybe it was the chaos that was in the very beginning. Then, there was nothing. This voice. What was she saying? It sounded like no language I'd ever heard before. Then I remembered what I had to do. I fed the sounds into the computer and waited. Just like the ancient anthropologists could construct an entire prehistoric animal from just a few fragments of bone, the computer could project an entire language from just a few significant sounds. Gradually, the voice became clearer and clearer. What ship is yours? Identify. Identify. Lark. Lark. How many aboard? Just one. Identify. Roger Thorpe, registered captain. Home port. Earth. Where is that? 
Consult star chart 876. What is star chart 876? Whatever you happen to use, start with Polaris. What is Polaris? You draw a line from Polaris to Deneb. There are no such stars. Hey, what's that noise? You are locked into a landing beam. Hold it. I don't necessarily want to land. Cut your power. I only need to get my bearings. Prepare to descend. Am I being forced to land? You are being invited. But I don't want... Cut all power. Step clear of the ship. But where... where... Follow instructions. Under protest. Follow the red line. Where am I going? Stop at the door. Wait. For what? It will slide open. Step inside. What's in there? Step inside. There's nothing in here. Step inside. All right. All right. What do I do now? Wait. What do you people want? Who are you? Where am I? I was in a room of some kind. A plain, bare space. There was a chair. Just a single chair, and that was the only furniture. I sat down. I waited. Who were these people? What did they want? Then the wall slid away. And facing me was a woman... She was sitting behind a desk of some kind. She was young, about 30-ish. She wore a black robe. Her red hair was short. She might have been good-looking if she didn't have such a serious look on her face. She touched a switch, and suddenly on the entire wall behind, there appeared an enormous sky chart. Point out your home star. My home star? Well, it, it doesn't show up. Too well, you see. It's a red dwarf. I can give you its position. Yes. Uh, just let me orient myself. I'll have to find Polaris. And then Tau City. I've never heard wait, of any... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This isn't possible. I don't recognize any of these patterns. I warn you to tell the truth. But this is all, all very strange. Orion should be right there. Orion? I don't see a single thing I know in this entire sky. This is the universe. Well, maybe it's a part of it that's off somewhere. This is the complete universe. Wait a minute. The universe is infinite. Why did you do that? Blasphemy. Everyone knows the universe is closed and limited. Okay, okay, have it your way. Why are there no papers on your ship? Because I didn't need any. What is your cargo? I'm sure you looked it over by now. Cosmetics. What are cosmetics? Didn't your translating computer tell you? Yes, but I don't understand. Well, it's just... It's just stuff that women put on their face. For what purpose? I guess it makes them look better. Better? What's the difference? Please, answer the question. Is it important? It may be the most important thing in the universe. These uh, cosmetics, they change people's faces? You could say that. It disguises them. Well, strictly speaking, it might. I see. Yes. Yes, I see. Well, I hope you see something, because I don't. Interrogator. Yes, censor. We have examined the ship. Have you examined the prisoner? Who says I'm a prisoner? <laughs> you have not been spoken to. I have examined the prisoner. We see no use for the cargo. Destroy it. At once. Confiscate the ship. Immediately. Dispose of the prisoner. What does that mean, dispose? Uh, save him for the games or eliminate him quietly. Whatever suits you. What is he talking about? I shall save him for the games. Look, am I being sentenced to something? To death. Wait a minute. Don't I get a trial? You have been tried and found guilty. I have the right to defend myself. You have no rights at all. <laughs> place is this? It could very easily fit certain places here on our own earth. 
But this is a story that takes place far in the future, in a place so far away that the imagination can scarcely encompass the distance. But space, time, what do these things matter? People are people everywhere, aren't they? I shall be back shortly with Act Three. More things in heaven and on earth than are dreamed of in your philosophy is a favorite line of Shakespeare's. And of course, he had a rather limited idea of heaven. He didn't know that the heavens consisted of an infinity of space with an unlimited number of worlds. Can you imagine what he might have written had he been able to talk with a modern astronomer or an astronaut? From what I could gather, the man was called the censor. The girl who had been talking to me was called the interrogator. Anyhow, they both decided that it was all over for me. The man left. You will be executed at the games. What games are these supposed to be? The games to honor the establishment of the autocracy. Look, I don't have anything to do with all this. What was your purpose in coming here? I was on my way to Medusa. Medusa? Yes, it's a giant yellow star. There that... is no such star. How can you make a statement like that? Because I never heard of it. That doesn't mean that... If it existed, I would have heard of it. Since I have never heard of it, that is proof that it never existed. Why do I have to be killed? Because you have come here to overthrow the autocrat. That isn't true. Are you a stranger? Yes. The only reason strangers come here is to overthrow the autocrat. Since you admit to being a stranger, oh, it just means... just hold on. That doesn't necessarily follow. Do you have legitimate business on this planet? Well, no. Then you admit it. Since you do not have legitimate business, you therefore must be treated as a stranger. She stood up and nodded her head. Two men in black robes came in. I understood I was to go with them. I don't care what world you're in. A cell is a cell. This was a small room with smooth white walls. There were two beds in it. I had a roommate. His name was Artie. And I asked him why he was in jail. I tried to kill the autocrat. Look, set me straight, will you? Who was the autocrat? He is the maximum ruler. And that's why you want to kill him? I want to kill him because he oppresses the people. And then what? Then perhaps the next maximum ruler will be a kinder person. And suppose he turns out worse? That has happened before. Mm -hmm. well, in that case, what do you do? Kill him and hope again. Wouldn't it make more sense to eliminate all these rulers entirely? Well, then who would rule? The people. The people? How could the people rule? Well, they would elect representatives to, well, to, let's say, to a Congress. I don't understand how that could work. It doesn't work with all these rulers, either. Well, that's because he has not come yet. Who? The ultimate ruler. And who's he supposed to be? The ultimate ruler? He will come down from the skies. How? He shall be carried by a bird. You have to be a pretty big bird. Yes. And he would mark his people. Mark them? In what way? In a certain way. In other words, you don't know. I only know what the prophecy reads. Oh, it's prophecy. For those of us who believe he will come. Still, it should be easy to explain what marking his people would mean. Well, I suppose with a sign that will enable everyone to recognize them. All right. Meanwhile, how does it look for you and me? We shall be executed. You say you were opposed to the ruler. What did you do? I wasn't able to do anything. We are too few, too weak. Or maybe we are many, but we do not know it. We have no sign by which we may recognize each other. Well, what did you actually do to wind up in here? I... I complained. You complained? About what? The weather. You mean you're going to be executed because you complained about the weather? It wasn't the first time. If you establish yourself as one who complains, it means you are basically a dissatisfied person. 
Therefore, you are likely to revolt. Well, do you plan to just sit here and wait? It does no good at all to make other plans. Why not? How can plans be carried out? We are sealed in here. There is no hope of escape. There has to be something we can do. We must face our fate bravely. I can't accept that. Accept it, since you may not reject it. It seemed there was no help at all. The days passed. When would it happen? The games at which the execution would take place. Or were the executions the games? Even Artie didn't know. And the jailer who brought us our food wasn't talking. Then one morning, Artie was taken out of the cell. And I thought, this is it. But why was I being left behind? Then about an hour later, Artie returned. Hey, I thought that was the old ball game for you, Artie. You were worried, I'm sorry. It's my fault. Your fault? Oh, I should have told you. As the day draws closer, you're given a chance to save your life. Oh? What kind of chance? Well, naturally, you don't take it. Why not? What have you got to lose? Everything. You see, you are given an opportunity to inform on your fellow conspirators. Oh. The fact is, I don't have any fellow conspirators. Well, didn't you say that you belong to an organization that wants to overthrow the autocrat? I didn't say it was an organization. Well, then how do you expect to... One person can do it, if he is resourceful enough. But wouldn't it be better if you did have a group? Of course, but how would we know each other? I was very brave, but I wonder... Suppose I did have confederates. Would I have betrayed them to save my own life? I don't think you would, Artie. Then suddenly the door opened and the guards were in the cell. They grabbed me. I was hustled along some corridors and finally into a room. A small room. She was behind a table. There was no place for me to sit. Suddenly she took a small metal rod from under her black robe. She pointed it at every part of the room. It gave off a squealing noise. One has to be sure. Of what? I'm sorry, I cannot offer you a chair. My name is Dinara. What do we have to be sure of? That we are not overheard. We are safe for a moment at any rate. What am I doing here? You know what you are doing here. You have been sent here to save us. I what? You are the ultimate ruler. Me? Now, j j just it hold on. It does you no good to deny it. I'm telling the truth. I have no idea It's probably the truth as you see it. You do not know that you are the ultimate ruler. But you have fulfilled the prophecy. The prophecy? Surely Artie has talked with you in the cell. Well, yes, but I didn't believe... It was predicted that the ultimate ruler will come down from the skies. He will be carried by a bird. What is the name of your ship? You can't be serious. The Lark. And it is a bird of delight. It's not an angry bird, a bird of prey. That's all coincidence. And he shall mock his people. Well? What have you brought on your ship, on the Lark? You have brought the devices with which your people can be marked, paint and powder. Look, I'm afraid you don't understand. It's the prophecy. I am not the ultimate ruler. It does you no good to deny My it. name is Roger Thorpe. You told me that. I come from a planet called Earth that revolves around a tiny reddish dwarf star called Sol. It doesn't matter. I'm a trapped space captain. I carry mostly contraband if I want to make a living. It's not important. There's a place called the Hole in the Sky. I never heard of it. It's a spot in the universe where, where crazy things can happen. You get all twisted and turned in space. And time. It makes no difference. So maybe I am in an entirely strange universe. It doesn't change the prophecy. If you are aware or not of being the ultimate ruler, you fulfill all the requirements. Why are you telling me this? I, too, wish to overthrow the autocrat. You? But aren't you a, a member of the regime? There are many of us who do our work secretly and hope for the day to arrive. The fact is, I'm going to be executed any day now. So what good does it do if you think I'm the ultimate ruler? You have been brought here by your beautiful bird. You have brought the material with which to mock your people. Your people will save you. There was only one way to make sense out of any of this. I would just have to assume that I had landed on a planet of nuts. Pure and simple. And so I did. But it got pretty grim. One day, Artie and I were taken from our cell and brought to an enormous stadium. 
There must have been a hundred thousand people. All of them wore black robes with hoods that covered their heads. Artie and I were led to the center of the arena. Then we heard the voice of the censor. These men have plotted against the autocrat. Their fate is to be consumed by the mighty electric energy of the state. In a few moments, they shall no longer exist. Let this then serve as a lesson to all who would attempt similar madness. Not a single word was heard from the robed and hooded crowd. And then we heard it. A humming that grew louder and louder. I began to feel warm, then hot. And soon it was as if I was on fire. Stop! Who dares halt the execution? I, the interrogator. For what purpose? Revolt. Arrest her. Before anyone dares to touch me, I shall remove my hood. Look at my face. Let all who have the same marking now show their faces. Her face was white as powder could make it. Her lips were red as the most flaming scarlet. I could hear her voice shouting. Believers in the ultimate ruler, show your markings. And now by the thousands, the hoods came off. And there they were. Men, women, children, with stark white faces and flaming red lips. Hardly anyone remained masked, except for the censor and a few high officers. And they were quickly hustled away. And now the silent crowd began to kneel. Kneel! Homage to the ultimate ruler! No, no one should kneel to me. You are the ultimate ruler. They must. About that makeup. You mean the sacred markings. Men... Men shouldn't really wear any. Would you deprive us of the privilege of showing our reverence and respect, ultimate ruler? The prophecy has been fulfilled. The ultimate ruler has arrived on a beautiful bird. He has brought with him the markings that his faithful followers have proudly put on and shall wear forever. And now, all hail the ultimate ruler! I don't understand completely. I'm the ultimate ruler. I'm treated with respect and reverence. I have whatever I want. There are times when I can't believe it. Am I lost in space? Or am I lost in my own imagination? Who knows? At times, this is real. And times when it seems like a dream. I only know one thing. I entered the hole in the sky. And I'm still in there. Do any of us know what it means? Is there a hole in the sky? Is there a Bermuda Triangle? Are there mysterious disappearances that simply defy all rational explanation? We work for centuries to solve a riddle. And then when we think we know the answer, suddenly the original question looms larger than ever. I'll be back shortly. I'm going on a picnic. That's nice. With Blanche, my sweetheart. That's her over there. And you want us to make up a picnic basket? With special wine and special food, Mr. Uh... Vino Bronco. Hi, Mike McDonald. Vino Bronco is the name of Lancer's white dinner wine. Vino Bronco? Yes, very crisp and refreshing. It's affordable and it goes perfect with any food. Like caviar? Vino Bronco is perfect with caviar. Okay, give me two quarts. Of what? Of caviar. It's $25 an ounce. How much do you want? Right. Well, there'll be two of us at the uh, picnic. Uh-huh. And uh, Blanche eats like a bird. Well, just give me an estimate. How about a quarter of an ounce? <clears throat> Perhaps you'd enjoy the Vino Bronco with something a little less expensive. You mean like this chicken? This pheasant. Blanche eats meatloaf. Isn't this meatloaf? No. She eats meatloaf by the gobs. It's not meatloaf. It's party de foie gras. Okay, I'll take the Lancer's Vino Bronco. And what do you have to eat for under ten bucks? This jar of mustard. Perfect. Blanche eats mustard by the gobs. I'll wrap it up. How do you want to eat the mustard here? You what? can't eat the mustard. Ah, the summertime. When everybody's fat. Fancy turns to love and Lancer's Vino Bronco White Dinner Wine, imported by Hubline, Hartford, Connecticut. 
You think you've got a problem buying your mother a present this Mother's Day? Try buying presents for four mothers. I have my mother, Jack's mother, my grandmother, and his grandmother. I couldn't possibly leave anybody out. So I give them each the Whitman sampler. The sampler's been a Mother's Day tradition with us for years. If you've got a problem about what to buy your mother this Mother's Day, give her the Whitman sampler. It's the perfect way to say Happy Mother's Day, no matter how many mothers you have. At the store, they told me there's a powerful anti-itch drug I can buy without a doctor's prescription. Now, I use Bicozine Cream as directed. No more burning, embarrassing itching. No more scratching. Bicozine actually speeds healing. Bicozine Cream. What a relief. Now, soften and remove hard, callous skin with the same ingredient doctors use most. Apply Dermasoft Cream to feet, hands, elbows as directed. Dermasoft Cream. Maybe there is a hole in the sky. After all, Einstein spoke of a place where the past, the present, the future are all intermixed and intermingled. He says it occurs at the speed of light. But just think, in the universe that's surrounded by our own minds, the private universe that each of us presides over, the past, present, and future frequently mix and mingle. And that truly can be where you find the hole in the sky. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Joan Shea, Earl Hammond, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. If you can't pay your gas, electric, coal, oil, or other fuel bills, you may qualify for help from the city of Detroit. To apply, you must live in...